we saw the previous example, the Pampi IO. I, I, I'm genuinely saying I would fall for this trick if I would like get a lead from I know Google Stack Overflow and then someone would recommend this package, I would go over and install it. Uh, and bad stuff will happen once you install a malicious package. Credentials sent and game over. From an attacker point of view, once a user, once a victim installs this package, pip install supply chain demo, but you can install it in many ways. This is what the attacker is receiving. He receives SSH keys, environment variables, that simple. And we, as we developers, store these credentials. You know, we enable two-factor authentication on GitHub. Uh, we state whatever we want, the related Git repository. No one checks if it's actually true. It's hard to know who's telling the truth. Accounts are taking over. Uh, we saw a couple of examples. Uh, not only maintainers enable two-factor. Expired domain, some developers use custom domain names and forget to renew them, so attackers re-register them and recover the account credentials. We have mechanisms to auto-update our dependency by design. We want to be on the latest security updates. So you might be asking for a specific version or like nearby this version and you will get the latest. Depends on the convention of our semantic versioning. We saw that take advantage by attackers in the UE parser JS incident, like this is why uh, the attacker bought Faisal credentials, simultaneously published three malicious versions at the same time to cover the surface. And we don't have a right answer, but we have a trade off. Either we do slow updates and more exposed to vulnerabilities, or we do rapid updates and unfortunately more exposed to supply chain risks. Now, one more reason this stuff might happen is. Uh, maintainers get busy over time. This is a message I received last year. I, I maintain a couple of open source projects, and one of them was uh, a, a Flutter library. Uh, I played uh, play around with Flutter a couple of years ago, and I created some open source package. And someone, and I forgot, like, I didn't have enough time to maintain it. Like, I moved on to other things. I have my uh, first child, and uh, I started a startup company, a lot of, you know, occupation. And someone sent me this message. I see you're not maintaining this, this project. What do you say? Do you pile on some GitHub issues? You have some pull requests. Would you like me to help you and you give me like contributor permissions? Guess what I said? Yes, take it away. <laughs> I mean, if you want to help, I, 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 I would love that because I want this project to help other people. And so far, so good. I mean, nothing bad happened, but I might be part of the statistics. This is the project, by the way. Um, and we're handing over at some point our, we're adding all kinds of strangers to our projects. We don't have, this is open source. Um, we have trust paradox. I mean, CISOs apply zero trust across all kinds of uh, the parts of the organization. While we tr blindly trust strangers, might be attackers and backdooring them into our sensitive data centers, development machines. Uh, this, is, this is a paradox without a solution. Uh, it takes a lot of time to detect malicious uh, packages in the open source. Uh, our research finds that on average it takes over 200 days. Uh, and if we look at the attack's life cycle, uh, attackers launch their attacks. At some point, defenders detect this malicious activity and the package registries has the permission to remove them. This is MTTD, mean time to detect. MTTR, mean time to remove. So we saw around 200 days. And this one might take a day, might take a couple of hours, might take a month. In order to improve it, we need better transparency. We need to share more information. This will result in reducing the MTTR. We have many moving parts across the supply chain. Uh, a lot of us love to customize their development machines, to install all kinds of linters, plugins, all kinds of tools. I, I love to do that. And we talked a lot about dependencies, so, but we have a lot of other threats across the supply chain. Just to give you simple examples, someone might install a malicious IDE plugin on his Visual Studio code, or a GitHub app, like, it, it might be okay, but someone will hijack it in some way and send malware. Package registries, even private, might cache malicious dependencies. 
And I want to put the spot on, on this part, like malicious build server CI flows uh, plugins. So we are all aware and love GitHub Actions. For those of you who are not aware of it, it's a way where you host your code on GitHub. You have a built-in uh, functionality to run all kinds of workflows you want, uh, to package, to build, to test your software. You can write your steps customly, or you can use steps from the marketplace. Um, GitHub has, GitHub Action has a rich marketplace where you can find a GitHub Action for every purpose. For example, sending a Slack message, this is something you don't need to develop by yourself. All you need to do is add this step, provide it your credentials, and you get your messages, whatever, whatever messages you want. For example, this is what a YAML file of GitHub Action looks like. You have a region of steps. Uh, this is a step, and this is a, a step comes after, uh, where you have this references uh, the marketplace uh, GitHub Action. This as well. What I want to show you right now is how using a technique called repojecting, attackers might hijack GitHub Action pipelines. So GitHub Actions uh, takes, when you're adding a dependency to a GitHub Action, it takes the GitHub Actions code from, straight from the source, from the GitHub repository. So this is the user account on GitHub, this is the repository, and this is the release tag. And it matches. There, there is no middleman, like uh, different uh, package registries like NPM, like PyPy. You don't have these CDNs. It's being consumed straight from the GitHub repository. Taking this setup, we have a GitHub action. We uh, goes under the name NPM publish. The user account, for simplifying the, the example, is called user. And we have a corporate using this GitHub action as part of his pipelines. What this GitHub action is doing is publishing a package to NPM. Okay? In order to do that, the project needs to provide the credentials to NPM, and all of the code, all of the packaging of the nasty stuff is happening on the GitHub uh, action. No need to re-implement it. Um, so when we have uh, situations where users rename their user account, uh, we have uh, automatic redirect by GitHub. So functionality might con may continue to work because dependents are unaware of this change. So you have usernames rename the user account and their uh, dependencies uh, keep working. When attackers understand this, and we saw it taking advantage in the wild, uh, they uh, can rename their user account into what was renamed by the user. So if user is now free on the market, the attacker can rename its account. Uh, whenever this happens, uh, attackers can also publish uh, their GitHub action on the GitHub marketplace, uh, which gives them full control on uh, the CI/CD flows in this specific step. Uh, we found this flaw on GitHub uh, late 2021. We worked together to fix this issue. Right before it got fixed, we saw someone take advantage of it, but uh, luckily it was resolved very fast. Um, so the impact of malicious CI plugins is they steal your private code, they can modify your code with unloaded behavior, and steal your credentials like account takeover, even if you enable two-factor authentication, you have their credentials right over there. So this is why it's that easy. I'll, uh, I'm running out of time, so I'll move a couple of slides. Uh, what do we do? A couple of important messages. It's a different uh, terms. Vulnerable code is not malicious code. We can live with a couple of vulnerabilities as a risk management. It's never okay to have malicious uh, dependencies. You need to remove them as soon as possible. As an ecosystem, we need to share more information. Uh, we need the industry to add it what's being reported. Uh, finding of malicious packages, samples of malicious packages. As of today, it's being removed and deleted. So defenders can't learn from attacker's actions. Um, we need better standards. We don't have like uh, universal IDs for malicious findings. So we, we, like we audit vulnerabilities using CVEs, but we don't have it yet for malicious uh, packages. We're in this together. What package registries can do is verify the information uh, every, uh, developer states or attacker states um, and they display it for developers. Uh, 
we report a lot of findings, thousands in a month. We do that manually, like going to a form, clicking next, submit. If this information, if this uh, action can be exposed to defenders via API, it will be very, very uh, helpful. And when, remove, when package registries remove pa malicious packages, uh, we, need, we will appreciate, uh, even like in a closed group, uh, having the uh, quarantine samples. And this is summary, uh, running out of time. Important messages, it's our responsibility. It's not someone's responsibility to find it. We're all in this together. Please don't take code from strangers without verifying. And I have some cool de demos. If you want to experience the package lab in VR, uh, come to our booth at the expo. Uh, you can see by yourself how easy it is to publish a malicious package from an attacker's point of view. Don't worry, we will not cause damage to any innocent developers. Uh, but it's a super cool demo. Check it out. Thank you very much. Feel free to ask questions. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, we are active on the uh, OpenSSF calls. Uh, what's your name? Jonathan asked, for those of you watching uh, remotely, if we're participating in OpenSSF's uh, um, working groups. Yes, we're going on the calls. Um, very helpful. And actually, I'm gladly meeting uh, a lot of uh, great uh, people at the summit. So hoping to some of the uh, things we need as ecosystem to create a better uh, world for developers uh, will happen like in face-to-face. Yeah, let me go back. Well, I, I, what's your name? Uh, Artman. Sorry. Artman. So uh, Artman asked, um, like, I, I stated this uh, um, IDs, and I refer to similar to CVEs. What I mean here, uh, when we are reporting and classifying CVEs, we're having a new universal ID, but we don't have this for uh, malicious packages. So what's end up is every vendor makes up its own identifier. So you can see for the same incident, you have, like, this is, this is what happens in check marks, and this is what happened in Sneak, and Sonotype, and GitHub. I mean, we need a universal ID to track these. We would love to give our opinions, so I'll talk with you after the. Um, more questions? Cool. Thank you, guys.